a split seed. More lemon. Lemon meringue. Is it lemon or a meringue? It's just not lemon meringue. Is it lemon or a meringue? <laughs> no, it is correct. <laughs> well, we made an absolutely awesome lemon and meringue pie the other day, actually. Yeah. It was yeah. really good. Really? <laughs> Is that work? Yes, working. Is it? It's on the correct account. Yes. This is always a bit of a flaw in our... Hey everyone. Hello everyone. A sunshine of Edinburgh. Seven. This is the warm-up glass, just we haven't started yet. I've started. <laughs> Simon always goes first. <laughs> Unless... Yvonne's watching, in which case he hasn't. No. So. Yeah. If the kids are watching, I haven't started yet. Thank you. <laughs> Let's know when uh, seven comes up. Seven. It is seven. It is seven o'clock. It's a Friday night. Uh, welcome to the garden again. Uh, Richard from Great Grog, and we are going to do German wines tonight. Uh, the German wines are uh, hopefully, if you bought the pack, uh, three wines. We've got a Riesling, which we're going to do first, the Fritz Walter. And then we're going to do the uh, Weissburgunder, Mesmer Weissburgunder number two. And then we're going to do a Spatburgunder number three, which is the Pinot Noir well, in French Pinot Noir. So we've got a Riesling, and it's pronounced Riesling as opposed to Riesling. And then we've got a Pinot Gris or Weissburgunder. And then we're going to do the Pinot Noir. Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. It's Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc. There you go. Graubergunder is is a Pinot Gris. No. No. <laughs> We're doing the right one. It's the right one. No panic. Do not there panic. Vice Burgunder is Pinot Blanc. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, don't panic. A bit of housekeeping. First of all, uh, these wines individually, or as the uh, tasting pack, we're do doing a 10% discount if you order online. And the code is Facebook with a capital F, just Facebook. Type that in as a coupon and you get 10% off any of these wines or you can buy them as a pack as well. I think I've set them up as a pack. So we'll leave the, the Facebook pack online until after the weekend. And you can order these wines either as a group or as uh, single wines. Any of these wines, 10% off, just type in Facebook if you're ordering online. If you want to phone up, you can do the same thing phoning up as well. And uh, just quote Facebook. You were doing the Facebook tasting up until Sunday night. There you go. Cheers. We've got Claire. Hello. And we've got Simon. So this is a, a trio of experts, uh, alleged, <laughs> <laughs> Richard, uh, Simon and Claire, and we're going to talk you through the wines. It's going to be a little bit different to what, how we've done it before, uh, hopefully as educational, and uh, we're just going to interact and get on with it. Um, I'll do the prices first, because there's a few questions. I've got Fraser, my son, behind the camera, who is going to shout out any questions you've got. Please make any comments, any questions. Um, this will uh, kind of bounce us around a little bit. So, uh, first wine is going to be the Riesling, which is nine pound seventy nine, and then we've got the the Mesmer Weiss, 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 Weiss Burgundy, Burgundy. white Burgundy, uh, and that is eleven thirty nine, and then the Pinot Noir is thirteen twenty nine. So nine seventy nine, eleven quid, thirteen quid, roughly. There you go. Plus discount if you order. <laughs> So if you want to pour yourself, uh, we've already done this, but we can get a little top up because yeah. we're, we're deserving. <laughs> Here's one we prepared earlier. Uh, some of the Riesling. Who wants to crack on with this? We were having a little discussion about this earlier as well. So, uh, this is from the Fouts down. If you think, do you know where Alsace is? It's basically the bit of Germany that sticks out above Alsace. I've got a little map. Uh, I'll maybe bring that out later. That, that was my homework. <laughs> So France is one of the warmer regions of Germany, so it produces in terms of Riesling really kind of rich vineyard styles. And when you give it a sniff. What does vineyard mean? Rich and tasty. <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> I would say rich and tasty. Yeah, it's got a That's bit more like, to it's it. It's got structure and body is what I'd suggest. Um, so it's really rich fruit on the nose. 
And when you taste it, give it a taste, ready to taste? I, th oh, we thought, didn't we th I thought lemon meringue pie. Yeah. Claire thought think? no meringue. <laughs> no, I've got lemon More meringue, lemon. but not the buttery pie. Uh -huh. That's what I would suggest. So it's got the. It's definitely got a nose. Lemon. I mean, we're outside in the garden and you can. You know, it's quite smelly. It's a, it's a smelly wine. Uh -huh. It's definitely lemon. As you would expect from Riesling. Definitely some on the, the green citrus side of things. Give it a swill about. Carry on. Crack on. Crack Claire's phone's ringing. It's like, it's I can see you on Facebook Live. That's <laughs> it's actually my mum. Her mum is phoning her. Stop ringing. It's live TV. <laughs> Anything can happen on live television. Right. Anyway, back to it. Back sorry. to it. Okay, sorry. Definitely lemon. Lemon. Definitely Definitely lemon. lemon. Side, sides of the jaw there. Kind of really kind of zesty, zingy. Is it drier than you thought? Because that kind of bottle. People see that kind of bottle and they think leaf frown well, these kind of long skinny bottles. Um, however, however yeah. Riesling is now, what? 23% <laughs> of the vineyard area. It's overtaken Molotow Gap, which is the grape that used to make leaf frown well. And the drier style is much, much, much more popular than it was say, in the 60s. And in fact, that's most, the style they do now. I say most, yeah, most whites in, in Germany are actually dry. This is this is trocken, which means dry, uh, and if it says trocken on the label, it's less than uh, nine grams of sugar per litre. This has eight grams of sugar per litre. It's the same as the Corvina last week, if you remember that one. Eight grams of sugar per litre. Corvina has eight grams of sugar. Corvina does have eight <laughs> grams of sugar per litre. A little bit more than the Carvinator as well. <laughs> but yeah, so this is dry, less uh, eight grams of sugar per litre. Does it? Eight grams? Eight grams, yeah. That's the red wow. wine from last week from the Italian oh. tasting. So what do you think of that? Any comments? Mm. Fire them away. Any comments, Frizzo? Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's comment. I think it's quite rich. That's it's, what I mean. It's, it's richer yeah. than, you, than you expect. Mm -hmm. It's quite It's like fairly full body for a reason. Like, yeah, I just think it's pretty what would you drink this with? I would drink it on its own. I'd have it with some charcuterie because the richness would be great. I'd have it... Cuts through the pork, pork, pork through knuckle. The Pork no, no, no German will be caught with his pants <laughs> down without a pork knuckle and a glass of Riesling. Uh, Any kind of German sausage. <laughs> oh, going into Euro trash territory. No, 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 but no, in terms of when we were looking at the website, they, there's lots and lots of local sausages. Th no, this is um, Fritz Walter is a real family, and they've been around for a couple hundred years. 1870. Whatever, I wrote this down somewhere. Somewhere in my notes, 1832 they were established. So, quite a, a couple hundred years ago, nearly a couple hundred years ago. Um, they're quite big for German producers. They've got 50 hectares. So, in old money, that's about 120 acres. So, that, that is really big for German production. However, that's still pretty small in white terms relative to Riondo, which was. Well, last we, week. we were looking on today, and it's amazing what you find out that most German producers. Uh, the, the top 10 best German producers are only between 10 and 19 hectares. They have, to have, they have nothing. The biggest uh, winery of the vineyards in Germany is 200 hectares, so they're all absolutely tiny. Compared to Riondo, which we had last week, which had 6,000 hectares. So that, one of the reasons German, German wine is a little bit more expensive is that they're all essentially boutique producers. There's no real big, massive commercial wineries in, in Germany at all. Which is really interesting. Which is why when you go and visit these folk, they have a wine shop, they've got a restaurant, they've got a boutique hotel. I mean, they, they are trying to make money every other way because 50 hectares is about break even, makes a little bit of money, but they really need to do other stuff. So they'll do a lot of cellar door sales. Um, yeah, still family owned after a couple hundred years, so good on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, it is really nice. so well, easy drinking. Well priced for, for German Riesling. It's hard to find a German Riesling for under a tenner at this quality, I'd suggest. So I think it's excellent. Crack, up, crack out the fish and chips. Anything greasy, that Riesling will just cut right through it. So Fritz, because it was a couple hundred years ago when he set it up, is uh, no longer with us. But uh, Eckhard uh, Walter is uh, the winemaker. So he makes the wine now. So presumably grandson, great grandson. Great, 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 great like. <laughs> yeah, unless he's very young. Okay. So, but yeah, just uh, what do you think? Any comments? Feel free to comment. 
it being live. Happy to answer questions. Just while while you're just drinking there, we have a perfect representation of the German wine industry here. We have two whites in red, so two thirds of the uh, of production in Germany is white, one third is red, which is actually pretty surprising. One in three German wines is red. That was surprising, I thought. Yeah, but they are now, I think they're one of the third or fourth biggest producers of Pinot Noir in the world. So they're, they're um, biggest producers of Riesling. Yeah. I'm not necessarily no. obviously because the well, Australians have a so? lot. Australians have a lot. Only in very tiny pockets. Well, Fals, so. Fals is the biggest producer of Riesling in the world, yeah. just this particular region. Uh, we were looking on the league tables today, and Riesling is, is number one, 23 percent. Second is Muller Turgau with 11 percent or 12 percent. Deep Frau Deep Frau And then so third is actually Spätburgunder. Yeah. So Pinot Noir is actually third most planted grape variety in Germany right now. It's fascinating. Write this down. There could be a test. But that's only quite prizes. recent, so it used <laughs> to be, be prizes. Muller Turgau and Silvana used to be up until about the 70s everywhere. And there was actually the Riesling plantations were much, much lower. But that trend for much um, more clean, more pure and drier wines, more just higher quality wines, not leave real milk. Okay. Well, They've now driven yeah. the size. Really nice. And we have a perfect spittoon here, Richard's Lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I finished mine. <laughs> yeah. Ladies first. Ladies first. People from Middlesbrough first. That's me. Second. 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 Sorry. One of the reasons I came around today is I haven't actually tried this wine or the Spate Burgundy yet. Yeah. No. Well, he wasn't it. invited. He just turned. Wow. I was on holiday when <laughs> the guys <laughs> tried it, so I've not tried it yet. He <laughs> <laughs> came around and had a burger, and uh, it was I've a spare burger. burger. Had, sorry guys at home, burgers. I've had a burger, but I will have a sausage later, thank you. That smells different. So okay. Yeah, not, not, different so, uh, not much, colour, not much difference. Both stainless steel tank fermented. Yeah. So no oak cool. in these. Wow. Loads different on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty. It's, it's really kind floral. Of, uh, ripe, very ripe pears. Yeah. That's delicious smelling. It's really good. Ripe and juicy pears. That's really forward, isn't it? I've, weirdly, I've tried the Graubergunder, that we, we, we got a sample of the Graubergunder by Messner, and this is much more generous. Yeah. This is much And this is quite a lot cheaper than the Graubergunder. Three quid actually. cheaper. They're yeah. four quid cheaper four than the Graubergunder, so it's a... Uh, I think it's better. I think it's better too. It's better one. Mm. Yeah, pears, peaches, apricots, loads but of... But soft, like, comment? it just has a Does lovely softness it? about it. Are we actually live? <laughs> Has anyone commented at all? Can anyone hear yes. us? Got a few comments on the Riesling. Just uh, Julie says very crisp, fresh, lemony. Yeah. Um, Carol says it's less perfumey than the other Riesling we tried. So, uh, yeah. So this Australian. Anyway, it's beautiful and pure and rounded and soft. It, it promises yet? to be, and I'm not trying it yet. It's it's just just the nose. <laughs> it promises to be generous. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty smelly. Mm. Less acidity than the Riesling, so less kind of lemony, zesty stuff, which people were talking about. Mm. But still good acidity, still balanced. Yeah. It's very balanced, actually, isn't it? Really balanced. Really balanced. Loads of texture, loads of mouthfeel, much more viscous than the Riesling. Feels heavier in the mouth, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's had some lees aging, I think, to give it that kind of mm. richer style, maybe just a little bit. It has more, has more texture. This is not refined. No, none of their wines are fine. Or they only, they only rack once during fermentation. What does, what does fining mean? <laughs> so fining means so wines when they are made out of grapes, there's obviously lots of bits left in the juice. And after fermentation. After fermentation, like so mice, mice beetles, yeah. not twigs. Stop, bits stop. of grape skins, things like that, but and just the dead yeast cells are all left over, and and all wine when it's fermented is cloudy. So there are various ways that you can clarify it, and the more you clarify it, the more you strip out the flavour. And one of the most simple ways to do it is literally just to let gravity take its course, and let the bits float to the bottom, and then you rack it off Sink. and you take the sink to the bottom. Get the point. Sink to the bottom. Life, life jackets don't let you sink. <laughs> sink to the bottom, That's thank right. you. 
and then uh, you, you wrap they'll be no, confused. You they'll be confused. Absolutely. And then you uh, and then you take out the pure juice, and and that, so that retains more flavors than any other way. So that's how they do it. At Mesma, they have a very very um, pure way of making low, wine. Low intervention. Low intervention. Low intervention. We want to do as little as possible to it. The length of flavour is amazing. Yeah, yeah I still good. can taste it now, and I've been talking mm. for quite Again, a long time. No <laughs> oak, no oak. Uh, they also try and do organic. Uh, they do sustainable agriculture, and they're trying to convert 2022. They intend to be fully biodynamic as well, which is kind of uh, yeah, Rudolf Steiner's method of absolutely following nature type. It's like organic you follow the lunar cycle. Or, organic with knobs on. Organic with hippie knobs on. Very, very kind of. And there's always a biodynamic debate. Uh, <laughs> does it work? Uh, no. That is, however, you say that. However, listen, however, you say that. I do say that. But, but, some of the best vineyards in the world use biodynamic farming and, and it why? possibly because it's the attention to detail Correct. in the vineyard and these... just that much care and attention and yeah exactly hugging your grapes and giving them all the love in the world is the better you the better the fruit the better the wine is going to be and that's always going to be the case there's a kind of plant analogy here if you speak to your uh, uh, plants in the house you've got a plant pot you speak to it every day uh, it gets fant fantastic uh, attention from you and hence you'll pick up disease much quicker. So if you speak to your plant every day and you stroke it, you'll go, there's an aphid, Ooh, take that off. Yeah. Lo and behold, the plant's healthier. So it's, is it because you spoke to it? Or is it because you paid attention to it? Mm -hmm. And hence, the plant is healthier. So there you go, that's my biodynamism. Mm -hmm. Say that after three bottles of wine. You're but anyway, there th every this, day. this is tasty. Yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah. coming back to And vice begunda is yeah. Pinot Blanc. Pinot, Pinot Blanc. Blanc, the white Pinot, the white Pinot from France, <laughs> which they, is it from France? Or is it, it, it is, France? it's mainly grown in Alsace, uh -huh. which is, you know, not too different. Intermittently German. German. Often it's mistaken German. for Chardonnay, isn't it? Uh, it's it's very similar, it's very similar to Chardonnay. Do they call it Auxerre Oxer 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 oh. Auxerre Auxerre is the town where Chablis Burgundy. is. So they it think it's a bit Chablis-esque. Maybe, maybe it's not. more it's more Pinot Blanc from Alsace. Yeah. But if, you, if you look at the map, the Vosges Mountains go up through Alsace and into Falz actually. So it's more floral than Chardonnay. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. What would we drink that with? I have a question. Oh, what, what would you eat that with? Oh, <laughs> is that the question. <laughs> no, but um, no. <laughs> well, Richard comments. Is it? It seems faintly presented wine. Is that? That I. So, yeah. Could be a lot of spritz to it, yeah. which is um, the bottle under pressure. If you, if when you're bottling wine and you bottle with a little bit of CO2 injection, uh, what happens is that uh, you blow out any oxygen. When it's bottled, you'll end up with a little bit of oxygen, sorry, a little bit of, a little bit of air above the wine before the screw top's put on. And because you've got air there, that's not such a good thing. So what you do is you bottle with a little bit of CO2, and the wine is bottled with CO2. So this, by the time the screw top is put on, there's a little air head space of carbon dioxide, which is relatively inert for, for wine. So what they do is they put a little bit of CO2 pressure in, the CO2 bubbles out, then they put the screw top on. So sometimes you get a little bit of CO2 left over. Uh, so you get that little bit of pétillance, mm -hmm. frizzante type stuff. So just leave it a minute. Uh, the other thing about the CO2 is if you bottle under a bit of pressure, uh, the CO2 makes it fresher. So like Coca-Cola. And stops it from spoiling. Try, try and have Coca-Cola with the aromatic. Flat. Some of the winemakers Red actually wine. use wine. it as a as a uh, uh, ladies, ladies, ladies. Use it as a trick to, to lift the aromatics. But yeah, it, it only it only sticks around for five or ten minutes after you open the bottle. It's not something that is permanent in the wine. Yeah, it's just a kind of modern way of bottling. So it's it's a uh, some people just, you shouldn't really oh, yeah. notice it. Crack on uh, just before we move on, Neil asks if you could explain why some Rieslings are petrol in the flavour. Ooh. <laughs> Aged Riesling becomes really weird, and uh, some people liken it to being petrol like. Uh, it's technically not, but it is a kind of weird uh, petrol forecourt when you go into fill up your car with petrol and it's it's got a strange. Um, easily petrolly mixed to it. Uh, Riesling goes like that when it's old. It just does. 
It's funny enough, it never used to be seen as a fault in wine, but now it's technically seen as a fault, which I think is a real shame because I really like that petrol character to it, actually. It, it, it just goes a bit odd and it divides the world, which is great because wine is about division and inclusivity. So, you know, it's wine as a. There's no petrol on the reasoning I, this, tonight. This is very was, young. <laughs> Very fresh. Yeah. It might go petroly later. Red wine. So okay. we've got that red wine. Now we're blathering. Mm. What do you think? It smells amazing. Colour wise, Pinot Noir should be Pale. light. Okay, should be light. Should pretty much be able to read through it. So if I'm reading my notes here, I say, I'd say it's thirteen pounds twenty nine. <laughs> uh, this is seventy percent stainless steel tank fermented. So they bring the grapes in, bung it in a stainless steel tank, fermented in that. Um, but 30% of it is then taken out of those tanks and put into old big oak barrels and by doing so you get a little bit of kind of oxygen leaking in through the barrels so it softens a bit of it but only 30% of the the total production goes into barrel 70% goes into steel what and what they're aiming in doing that is just to soften off the edges a little bit but they want to retain that freshness in the wine because when you smell it smells like fresh cherries and cranberries and like it's good isn't it it's really okay. really it smells good. amazing when, when you're smelling See? stuff when you're tasting wine outside you technically if you're being a real purist you should not be tasting wine outside because it blows away the smells uh, we should be inside but you know the sun was shining it's probably going to rain and thunderstorms you know splashes yeah. of rain if we start running away inside in two or three minutes it's because it's raining but <laughs> So you shouldn't be tasting outside, but I can still smell this outside, which means... It's lovely. It's like creme caramel. There's some, sp <coughs> there's some spice there. There's almost like a bit of orange. Kind of yeah, orange, orange peel. Like orange candy peel. Orange. Kind of candy, yeah, candy orange, orange peel smell to it. I get that. You it's that. got so that. much yeah, going on. Like, that's, that's very good. I smell about 10 different sure. things in this, yeah. which Com is a sign of a really, up. really good wine. The more, you can, it's not quite the more things up. you can pick out. Yeah, that we say that was complex. If you can yeah. smell ten different things, that's a complex, Already a complex nose. Know it's be good. Like this is a complex nose. Lots of <laughs> lots of different <laughs> lumps and bumps. Lots of lumps different. and bumps. <laughs> lots, thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> you ever hear the story about Simon trying to reach yeah. to get a twig no. out of his front <laughs> wheel, his bicycle, and getting his fingers trapped in the front Ow. wheel? My nose was interesting before that happened. <laughs> can I can I just? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Okay, children that are watching, you shouldn't be. Okay, children, don't stick your fingers in the front. In the spokes wheels, of your bike. Spokes, spokes no. of, don't, to, don't to do that. To be stop. To be <laughs> take the twig out. To be more <laughs> accurate. Yes. There's a leaf. I think <laughs> there's a leaf. <laughs> if there's a leaf stuck in your front wheel, stop. <laughs> Pull it out and then carry on. Yeah. Anyway, so nose, complex nose. Palette. The nose is amazing. Caroline adds vanilla to the complex. Mm. Smells it. Mm. You get a little bit of vanilla from the oak, just a tiny bit, just but not, touch. you know, it's very, very mm. subtle. Because mm. if it was new oak or smaller barrels, you get a lot more. Yeah. But yeah, I get I get more vanilla and spice on the palate. Than mm. the I, I get do. spice, I get definite cream. spice. How do they it's get cream. that for 30% oak? Well, I think there's that. been a lot of, the creaminess, creaminess comes from knees aging, for sure. Right? It's not come from the oak. The vanilla, I well, don't know. The, the oak's old, isn't it? Big yeah, food it's massive. Yeah, 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 yeah. 500 big litre. Big, five, big, big, yeah. They're old, they haven't so. Big like double sized barrels, big, big barrels. It's very much more. It's creme caramel again on the palate, isn't it? There's definitely a creme it caramel does, yeah. and a spice. That kind of slightly burnt sugar, mm. but not. Yeah, like a really car caramelised so. sugar. So it says caramel, caramelised scallops. Caramelized oh, scallops. Quite scallops. I think this would be a. Actually, if you did it this. It tastes like caramelized scallops. If you could drink seafood. this. Seafood. Okay, seafood. Scallops of butternut squash puree. Oh. This would be absolutely. Mm. Awesome. I, think, I think kind of seafoody, smoked seafood. For your base, you could have it. Because, you know, red, people say you don't have red wine with seafood. Yeah, you do. If it's got a little bit of smoke. If you've got a seafood splatter and it's got a little bit of smoke in there, <laughs> then you just do. Seafood platter, platter, seafood platter. I like a splatter. <laughs> just throw some longer steams. Not it. oily fish, but the kind of rich meaty fish with the you know with the kind of smoky red sauce. This would be absolutely fantastic. And I think because we all picked up about orange stuff. Yeah, I had a really good uh, 
match with a Pinot Noir in, in Fishes in the City a few years ago, where there was a tangerine fur crust to, the, to, oh. venice, to venison. So a venison with a tangerine fur crust, which is just like a fir tree, but it has a very pronounced orangey character. Yeah. So that with a bit, yeah, a bit of rare venison with some. When I had a quick look on the text sheet, it, rem it um, said this would really match well with crispy duck, like Chinese crispy Hoi duck pancakes, which yeah. I think would be hoisin, hoisin sauce really great. I think that'd be a good match. Yeah. Fish, fun, fishers right? in the city are looking to open first of August, by the way. Just if you want some seafood. <laughs> A, a seafood splatter. splatter. Ask for a seafood splatter. splatter. <laughs> so seafood splatter. They do a very good seafood splatter. So what do you think of that? Comments? I it's think excellent. That's the first time I've tried that. Like right now, and is it? And I think that's, is it? it's that's phenomenal, fantastic. Isn't it? Okay. I tried it that's in Manchester. Nice. There was a chap was like, in today. To so I forgot his name, but there was a chap in today. Said I've bought a bottle of this because Richard says that's the best wine I've ever had from Germany. I did connect him and say that it was the best Pinot red wine, <laughs> like the best red yeah. wine I've ever had from Germany. And I honestly think it, it is. It is absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's bloody good, isn't it? If you were doing, 13 pounds 29. Yeah. If you were doing a... Yeah, if like, this is a burgundy, you would pay, you know, twice, at least twice. Young? Yeah, very young. Young, but it's... it's but it drinks like beautifully. It's, it's, it's still will got tannins, you know, you finish them on the finish. That's that's got some yeah, I'm yeah. getting a little bit of fairness in there, but it will drink lovely. There's still lots of saliva left in the mouth, so it's, yeah. it's got some a, a good tannic. bit of acidity, bit of tannins, oh, yeah. fruit, super is, fruit balance. It's going to develop and get that kind of mushroomy character. Okay, the uh, size rushed. of the estate? Tiny. Richard. 23 hectares? 27. 27 hectares, absolutely <sighs> tiny. Yeah. Stats, it's all about the stats. <laughs> I'm terrible about the stats. I'm all about the taste. <laughs> I don't care how many hectares I was doing. I genuinely don't care. I had a, a chat with Alan Scott, who we've tried some of his wines uh, from New Zealand, and he said basically you need about 70 hectares to break even oh, in really? wine. Yeah, about, he said 70 but is that hectares. In New Zealand? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's the size of a winery to pay for the stainless steel, the pumps, the pipes, the the winemakers and all, all of the of gubbins that goes with making wine. But they it's do about, buy in some grapes, I think, Mesma. Well, no, they have a restaurant, they have a hotel, yeah. okay, they have a shop, they have, a, they have a, a roadside place, which yeah. they've just built with a lovely okay. view over the vineyards, the hills, mm, we hills. hinted it today. I'm gonna to be there. By the way, if you, you can travel fancy, to Germany yeah. without quarantine. <laughs> so, uh, this is the place to visit, it. honestly. It's a fantastic spot. Simon was saying, I want to be there. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a beautiful view, isn't take, it? Over take, there, take note of on. That, really beautiful. That, the high terrace kind of awesome. uh, restaurant with the so views you, over you the need vineyard. That economically, places. because it's so small. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. There's a tiny, tiny bit of that's like 50, 70, 60, 70 acres. That's fantastic. These are people that make wine because they love to make wine, you know, and they can just about make a living doing it, not because they're doing it to make money. And you can taste that. Well, those wines were fantastic. They spoke of their grape variety, the country, the terroir, the country of origin, the generous, full flavoured. What's, what's terroir in German? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that that tiny, tiny micro. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to attempt <laughs> okay. uh, to translate. Uh, this, the, the Mesmer wines are family made. Uh, Gregor Mesmer is the, the uh, winemaker and uh, Martin does does the, the vines, so brothers make it. They make uh, 200,000 bottles a year, slightly more than we can drink, usually uh, 18,000 cases, so that's not a lot. Uh, anyway, we need to crack on because we're going to go over, so people are going to okay. lose, lose interest if they haven't already. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Facebook uh, is the 10% code, so next week is Spain. Who's doing that? We don't know. Yeah. We haven't decided. I'll do Spain. One of us the wines are great. Yeah, so they are Sp fantastic Spain, wines next week. Spain next week, uh, which is Rioja Vega Criantha, Alburino, Alburino, and Carver. Carver. So a red, white, and a fizz next week. And uh, next week, I'll tell you what you can do is let us know what you'd like to try. Yeah. There's an idea. What about mm. that? What, what would you like to try next? What, country wise or any wine? Well, I just any don't wine. know. Let, let's get a bit of feedback on yeah. that. Yeah, do a bit should, of should a try? comparison. Can you, can you say Gosset Champagne? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Hashtag. We could do champagne at the say. whatever. <laughs> just you know. Should yeah. we do another country or should we do uh, Chardonnays? Variety, Chardonnays. Yeah. Do you want to do Chardonnays? Mm. Chardonnays from different countries. Varieties, yeah. Pinot Noirs from different countries. Oh. Shiraz. I'm happy to oblige. Oh, oh, Richard, Richard, Richard. What is before it? we just before we finish, uh, you're going to say something about that. Right. Uh, sure. you, you've probably tuned out already, but. Van Sovere, which is backwards because it's a reverse camera. Mm -hmm. This was the first wine that I, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a long <laughs> When I worked in Oddbins uh, 20 years ago, uh, there was a Côte de Rhone roadshow uh, in the Caledonian Hotel in the West End of Edinburgh. When I was working in Oddbins, I had done 10 years of Oddbins and I, so I'm covered in paint because I've been painting the shop. And I went across to the roadshow, went around all the producers, there were a lot of guys in sharp suits and a guy with really dirty fingernails. And I thought, you know, he must be the winemaker. So I went to spoke to him, Philip, Philippe Chomarneau. And uh, I thought he's, he makes fantastic wine. So I phoned up the buyers in Oddbins at the time. They were a big chain of wine merchants, 200 shops, 20 something years ago. And I told them about this wine, it's better than anything we do. And their response was, uh, are you trying to tell us our job and at that point uh, I was studying for my master of wine which they were sponsoring me for which I was grateful uh, always will be uh, but uh, he was he was a little bit rude to me saying you try to tell me my job so I uh, handed my notice in a couple of months later I uh, set up myself uh, baby in tow Fraser's behind the camera now 22 he's a large chap just just come around first. Fraser come around just, just, just to get a perspective of how long ago this was he, he was uh, a baby at the time so this is Fraser the baby and uh, Shomano was was the catalyst for setting up Great Grog so I left Oddbins and we just relisted the Van Sobre because um, it's amazing yeah, it's, it's amazing wine we, we struggled to sell it because we were mostly a wholesale wine merchant um, only a little bit of our business is retail but now obviously that's flipped and we're pretty much all retail all retail so we've taken it back on and it is fantastic wine. It is mm. so anyway, pure. Fancy. It's a Côte de Rhone, Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre blend, single village, uh, small family oh, production. Totally. Same same kind of site, yeah, biodynamic, organic, sustainable. Same kind of thing as these German chaps. So it's a really tiny little production. Is that enough, Chad? Thank you for coming around, Fraser. Thanks, Fraser. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations on your first. Yeah, yes, Fraser's, Fraser Fraser's just graduated. So that's how long ago this uh, got first, got first, Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.